Economics. And I'm really excited that you're all here. I wanted to introduce some of the other folks that we have with us. Um, so Jen Thomas is our Assistant Director of Admissions. You've probably uh, gone back and forth with lots of email and telephone calls. She's extremely helpful. And I know that she's been with a lot of you um, throughout this journey. We have Mrs. Kate Toussaint, the Chair of our Modern and Classical Languages Department. And Mr. Tim Kurt, who is the director of our learning center, the summer school principal, and an English teacher. Um, so some, some very helpful faces uh, that we're going to have. Again, um, just so everybody knows, you have all been muted. If uh, or when you have questions tonight, please drop those into the chat. And um, what's gonna happen is, uh, Jennifer and Kate and Tim will kind of, if there are specific questions that sort of only apply to your one specific situation, they will answer those um, kind of directly back to you. If it's a question that's a little bit more global, then they'll, um, when I kind of pause periodically and, and stop for questions, then they'll ask those out to the group so that everybody can benefit from that answer. Um, at this point, I would like to begin the way we begin all things um, after I will ask Jen to record the session. If you haven't started recording it yet, um, we can get started. But we'll begin this uh, the way we begin all things, and that is with prayer. So if you will join me in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of new life, thank you for gathering us as a new community drawn from across the St. Louis metro region. Our faith teaches us that you are with us on every step of our journey. At this moment, we may feel excitement and anxiety. We may feel fear. We may feel hope. Continue to accompany us this evening as we take these steps, these first steps as St. Louis U High students and families on our way to becoming men and women for others. And we dedicate all of our thoughts, words, and actions to the greater glory of God. Amen. Amen. And Son and the Holy Spirit. All right, um, I am going to share my screen. So here we go. Um, you should all now be looking at uh, the class of 28 registration. So tonight is March 5th, and here we go. For folks who have just now joined us, uh, you'll notice that there is in the chat link a helpful um, Google Doc that has several different links um, that, that we'll be referring to throughout the evening. Um, so let's begin. First of all, let's congratulate the class of 2028. Um, so obviously it's a little bit strange on Zoom when you're just seeing tiles that often uh, belong to parents, but there are about you know 50 odd uh, families, maybe, um, maybe a few more that are gathering together in order to start this uh, St. Louis U High journey from an academic perspective. All of you spent some time together earlier at the welcome back night, which was terrific. Um, some of you know an awful lot of your classmates because of, of grade school and middle school and sports and, and faith life and all that sort of stuff. And, and others might be coming kind of by themselves. Um, Every year, we have a lot of students from a lot of different places experiencing things very differently. Um, so it's just a really exciting thing to see everybody starting to come together. Um, there at the bottom, and also this is one of the uh, one of the links that is on that page in the chat. You'll notice our PowerSchool uh, login. So PowerSchool is the system that we will use uh, later on in the evening to actually request the courses that you're going to request. Um, but before we get to that, I want to kind of fill out some goals for the sessions. So, like I said, we're going to submit course requests. Um, we're also going to go through all the implications of summer classes and make sure that everybody has a sense of the school day schedule for next year. Um, and then also we'll talk a little bit about placement tests and make sure that you have a good sense of whether or not taking a placement test is right for your son. Um, I wanted to introduce Mr. Tim Kurt real quick to talk about some learning center notes. Um, so Tim, if you've got, uh, if you're there, why don't you jump on? Um, thank you, Kevin. And so just to uh, once again, welcome. You'll be hearing and seeing a lot of me as we go in through the rest of the spring and into the summer. 
This is a follow-up of what was in the email that all parents um, and families should have received uh, last week um, from our admissions office. At the bottom, it had a reference to the Learning Center Student Support Form. What I'm about to say applies only to those families and students who will need or require access to SLU's two stated academic accommodations, which are extended time, which SLU defines as one and a half times uh, the time limit, and preferential seating. There is a form in that email, and uh, we'll probably email it again later on the spring. It's due by April 1st that must be completed. Without that form, that's our ticket to know to make a learning profile and communicate in the fall to all of the school and your son's teachers confidential, confidentially that they would have access to those accommodations. Even if you have already submitted documentation, I want you to think of this as separate from the HSPT process. That was just submitting information if you wanted to get accommodations for the extended time on that test. Uh, you still need to fill out this form because this helps us keep everything in order. Um, so as a result, only those students who have completed that form or at least uh, whose parents have completed and emailed that back to Mrs. Tippett uh, will have access to our accommodations. It's, uh, and so that, that's how we can keep it all organized. Now we will then need supporting documentation. If you've already submitted that documentation through the admissions process, you don't have to resubmit it. We'll go back and cross check with what we already have uh, 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 received. And then we will determine when Mrs. Tippett reaches out uh, towards the end of the summer with information about that, she will let you know if there's more documentation needed or what the next steps are. During the first week of the school year, all um, in the fall, all students with learning profiles will have that profile completed and sent to all their teachers. And that message will be delivered to all the parents. So again, I just wanted to highlight that we do need that form, regardless of if you've already submitted something for HSPT extended time. But if you if you anticipate that your son has a diagnosed um, learning disability or ADHD and requires access to our ac academic accommodations, you need to submit that form and email to Mrs. Tippett. If, you, if your son does not require that, you do not need to do anything with that Learning Center student support form. If you have any other questions, again, there's, there's Mrs. Tippett on the email for our documentation, and you can also reach out to me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, let's move on to our next step here. Um, so now we're gonna talk about uh, our language options. So St. Louis U High is blessed to have six options for everybody to, to learn. And the chair of our modern and classical languages department, Mrs. Kate Toussaint is going to talk through those options. Take it away. That's right. Hi everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here and to be speaking with you. So my name is Kate Toussaint and I am the chair of the modern and classical language department. We offer six languages, as you can see, to incoming freshmen. We have five modern and one classical. Modern languages are Arabic, Chinese, French, Russian, and Spanish, and Latin is our classical language. And we offer all four levels in each language. All of our language programs are excellent. And as you're making your choice, know that 85% or more of our students get their first choice of language. While this is great, and we're proud of that, that also means means that 15% of our students may get their second or third choice. So please make sure you think carefully about your language choices. And I, I know personally, there's a tendency for, for example, for me, if I don't get my first choice, there's a tendency for me to get disappointed, but I challenge myself usually this, um, and I wanna challenge you as well to think of it as an opportunity. Um, and really an important component of Jesuit education is being open to growth. And so this may be perhaps your first opportunity to do so at SLU. And I know for sure that I am biased, but I know firsthand our students have amazing experiences in their language classes, no matter the course. This is one choice that can really fundamentally alter their life and open up hemispheres. Perhaps they choose Arabic and spend a summer in Morocco. Perhaps they choose Russian and they spend, find themselves working with Ukrainian refugees in Poland, or perhaps they come to Spain with me and we can see where St. Ignatius was born. A final note on this choice, and I'm happy to take whatever emails or calls, however, you know, whatever nerves you're feeling or questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I really want you to lead to, 
let passion and energy kind of guide this choice, not fear. When you think about the language offerings, where do you, and I'm talking to the students here, but where do, where do you feel excitement and maybe some butterflies? I really want you to follow that. Um, I, I do believe that that's the Holy Spirit leading you to a really exciting path. The number one question I get um, concerns the placement test. So we offer placement tests in any of our six languages offered to incoming freshmen. Our placement test will be on Saturday, April 13th at 8.30 a.m. And the question, of course, the follow-up question is if your child or if you should take it. And the answer is maybe. So as well-intentioned as schools are, most language classes at the middle school level tend to emphasize vocabulary list or the cultural component of the language with a small focus on language skills, such as reading or speaking. And if your child went to a school with a focus uh, on vocabulary and culture and less on proficiency, there's really no need for them to take the placement test. We appreciate the exposure that schools offer, but it typically does not provide the sufficient, sufficient excuse me, foundation to place into a higher level language class at SLU. It's totally okay. We want every single language student at SLU to be challenged, but also positioned to thrive and succeed. If your child went to a school with a more robust curriculum, we do recommend taking the placement test. And if you have any questions, has it, don't hesitate to contact me and also add it to the chat. We can, we can discuss that tonight. Um, two final notes. One, if you speak a language other than English at home, we recommend you take a new language at SLU. Um, we offer so many and why not get that third language going? And then your junior year, you can take the upper level language courses of your home language. Uh, we really hope you take advantage of this. And the last thing is about, um, oh my gosh, it just left my brain. Oh, I I've been getting some questions about students who are nervous because they haven't taken a language before. And that's all of our level one or, or we, we, we make sure our students are thriving. So if you haven't taken a language before, that's not, not a problem at all. Um, that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Kate. Um, so one thing that you might wanna think about while I'm kind of starting into the next, uh, the next phase of this is um, your admissions. You, you received an email uh, from me last week that had your power school, the directions for setting up your power school account. Um, if you've done that, then you're actually able to register tonight. If you haven't, you could do it, um, particularly if there are multiple people watching. Um, one of you could work on that now. Um, and just know that they're gonna, when you're doing the registration, an email will get sent back. You'll have to uh, acknowledge through uh, clicking a link that you got that, and then your, your registration portal um, will will be open. So um, you can work on that while while I'm talking about these other things if you would like, uh, but you certainly don't have to. Um, so let's move past and start talking a little bit about fine arts. Um, so our fine arts curriculum um, is a, a pretty exciting thing. And incoming freshmen have the opportunity to take three different paths within the fine arts survey of visual arts, survey of performing arts, or instrumental music. Each is a semester long course that the student will take in either the first or the second semester of the school year. And there are some exceptions there that, that I'll talk through. First, um, let's talk about survey uh, visual arts. So the freshman visual arts survey course consists of three parts, drawing, and design being the first segment, followed by a segment of ceramics and then a segment of printmaking. In drawing and design, students will learn the important elements of visual art and the principles of design, employing them in their own works of art. Students will learn the foundations of drawing from, ob from observation using proportion and perspective as guides for understanding. In ceramics, students will begin to build understanding of the clay as a three-dimensional medium, its molecular structure, and its important properties as they pertain to their individual creations of sculpture and functional work. In printmaking, students will use hand tools to carve, etch, and transfer original images onto wood, linoleum, or plexiglass for the purposes of creating multiple copies of their designs. 
Students will learn how to utilize a variety of media, including inks and paints, in order to do so. Critiques and self-assessments will play an integral part of the semester in all three disciplines. Students will begin to develop an appropriate vocabulary for analyzing works of arts and utilizing group assessment uh, to benefit their aesthetic maturation. So again, those three elements are all present in the survey of performing arts. So drawing and design, ceramics, and printmaking, you'll, you'll, do a, you'll spend a third of the semester in each of those areas. The other course is survey of performing arts, which consists of also consists of three parts, chorus, dance, and theater. In chorus, students will learn as a team how to sing and read a wide variety of music through healthy vocal techniques and musicianship. You got some great pictures of our guys there. The introductory portion of dance focuses on basic rhythm, movement, and coordination, as well as the social aspects of dance. Performance studies include beginning jazz and hip hop, along with musical development, coordination, and flexibility. Dance classes include complete full body warm ups and various combinations. In the theater portion of survey, students have the opportunity to begin understanding how voice, memorization, character, and movement work together to create, a, to create scenes on stage. Lessons incorporate play, theater, and improv games, tongue twisters, and the study of the basics of theater and acting. Students watch professional productions and study them for insight into their own attempts in performance. Students will also receive training in the art of juggling and showmanship. Finally, um, we have freshman band and orchestra. Now, band and orchestra are a much more complex uh, element that we go into in a, a great deal of detail, but that's all at the end. So any of you families who are interested in band, orchestra, any kind of instrumental music, will ask you to stick around at the end, and I'll explain in more depth what that is like, since most of you will choose either survey of visual arts or survey of performing arts. Um, we'll just leave that now and then you'll know to stick around um, if you're interested in talking about band and orchestra. So the next thing that I want to do is talk about the implications of summer school on our schedule. Um, so basically, the way to think about the schedule is there are seven slots into which we put our classes. This will be true all four years. So in freshman year, everybody takes a year of theology, math, uh, English, science, and their language. Their sixth slot typically is filled up with social studies and fine art. If you do not take summer school, then you would take in the first semester our SLU 101 course. That's the introductory course for, SLU, uh, for, for coming into SLU. Then you would take a quarter of health and computer and a quarter of computer programming. So again, lots of students at St. Louis U High take seven classes. Um, it's it's a manageable load. It's fine if you don't you know want to miss out on that big trip for summer. That's okay. Your your son will be able to get everything done that he needs to get done. That being said, um, St. Louis U High is blessed to have a very robust summer school experience, and what a lot of people prefer is to take these summer school classes and um, in, in the summer, so in the summer you'll take SLU 101, health and computers, and then you can trade for free periods. So you'll still take theology, English, math, science, and foreign language, plus social studies one semester and fine art the other, though these might flip flop. And then your seventh slot will be free to um, to concentrate on getting some homework done, maybe, you know, being a little social with your friends. So summer school is not required, um, but lots and lots and lots and lots of people participate, well over 90% every summer. Some of you would also have been uh, notified that it is recommended um, for you to take our prep mathematics course. Um, this, would, this would indicate that there's some element of what happened in grade school and middle school and or your standardized testing that leads us to believe that the best way to be successful is to take that math prep course. If that's the case, then we'll just sub uh, computer programming for math right here. Math prep is only offered in the summer. 
Um, and then everybody will take at least algebra one as, uh, as a freshman. And then we'll talk later about some of the other math courses uh, that we can move up into. But the idea basically is if you take SLU 101 Health and Computer Programming, then you can substitute for this free period, which a lot of students find uh, helpful during their freshman transition year. But that's not the only thing you can do. Um, and this is particularly important if we have uh, any potential band students here. So if you need, or if, if your son wants to take band, the vast majority of students take band for the full year in their freshman year. That's this red uh, line here. So band behaves just like um, the other five classes that take place all year long. Then you're basically doing your one, one semester of fine arts that every student takes and then substituting a free period for that second semester. So you'll notice that you'll have one semester of a free period and then your social studies course goes in the opposite side. Again, these might flip flop, but band will take place all year long. So if you want to be in the year long band, the important note is that you must take SLU 101 over the summer. Um, the uh, In order to, to free up that, that slot, that second slot for your second semester of band. Additionally, this is rare, but it is possible. Some students will take SLU 101 Health and Computers over the summer. And then rather than taking um, any free periods at all, they might choose to take a second fine art course or a computer science course that would be the next in their sequence. So basically you might take survey of performing arts here and then we would, and then the next course in performing arts would be either fundamentals of acting or dance one, or you could move into a chorus or something like that. Again, the vast majority of students do not do that, but some of the, the students that wanna get a jump on fulfilling requirements or they're super passionate um, about pursuing the arts um, or computers might choose to do so. Be aware, there is lots of time at St. Louis U High to take classes. So you don't need to feel a lot of extra pressure to, to slam in extra classes early on. The most important thing is that students transition well into St. Louis U High and are set up for the most uh, positive and beneficial experience once they arrive. With that, let's uh, let's stop and see if there are any questions. Um, Jennifer or Tim, are you guys getting any that you'd like me to, to answer for the whole group? Well, one thing, Dr. Foy, that is probably helpful for all parents to be aware of is that the free periods that you're referencing are in addition to the free periods that every junior bill receives every week. On Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they have activity period, which tends to be more co-curricular focused, but that doesn't mean that teachers aren't available to meet with our students um, if, if that's necessary. And then on Tuesdays, Thursdays, we have Studium, which also has academic labs incorporated and other opportunities for academic reinforcement. So those summer classes offer a free period in addition to those two um, special periods, activity period and Studium. That's right. I have a graphic later in the in the slideshow that kind of shows you what a week looks like. We'll get to that in just a moment. Other than that, the only other question that might help with parents and some reassurance is that if you did not receive your unique PowerSchool login email, it was sent by Dr. Foy on Tuesday, the 27th of February. Double check your spam folder because often emails from us may land there. And if you can't find it there, then um, feel free to send an email tonight to our tech support team, support at sluh.org, and they will be happy to get you your unique PowerSchool login. And I'll put that email address in the chat box. Very the good. Only, the only other thing I'd add is that in addition, so yes, it is SLU 101 is not uh, a definitive requirement over the summer. Um, and because we know families will have conflicts. The draw is not only the free period, though, the reason it's so popular is the chance to uh, become acquainted with not just the physical kind of navigating of the school, but also the the socialization that happens in that in that in that time frame as well. So there is a balance. So there is a draw. It's not just for the free period. It is also for the the uh, orientation and the uh, preparation in anticipation of the start. Having said that, 
every freshman gets direction days at the beginning of the summer. That's why we have to do direction days at the beginning of the summer, since so much of the class will be there over the summer. And there is a formal orientation for everyone still in August, even if you have to miss that summer class. Great, thank you, Tim. Um, so a little bit more summer school information. So SLU 101 is a half credit. So all of our semester classes are a half credit. Um, the cost is $500 and they'll meet every day. Health is a quarter credit and uh, is $250. Computer programming, also a quarter credit for the same price. Prep math doesn't actually count as credit because it's just preparation. You can look at it as a, as a prereq for high school. Um, and uh, like I said, I'll have a graphic for this, um, but you should have, if, if you didn't get any information about prep math, then your son is, is not appropriate for it. And then um, basically what we want to, to, wanted to create in the summer is an experience that does a really good job of kind of onboarding students into what it means to be uh, a St. Louis U High student. So we've built a day that feels kind of halfway between an a camp, an academic camp, and regular SLU. Um, but it'll get students familiar with uh, it'll get them familiar with the building. They'll know where their lockers are. They'll meet a whole bunch of students. The the really kind of broad way is. What we're trying to create is a scenario where the freshmen kind of feel like sophomores because they spent so much time together over the summer. That way, their nervousness and their and their their anxiety will sort of all have been figured out. And come August 14th, they'll be able to focus just on learning, um, which obviously is what we are most passionate about, particularly because a lot of them will then start fall sports and, and things like that, too. So the summer. Uh, situation just really helps build us um, into this direction. So here's just a, a quick graphic for what this can look like. So like I said, the morning class goes from 9 to 11.30. Then everybody eats lunch together in the commons for 45 minutes. Then we go to our second class. So since the vast majority of students take SLU 101 Health and Computer Programming as their um, as the three summer courses, that's kind of what this looks like. On Monday, students will have health, or uh, an example would be that students have health in the morning, then lunch, then SLU 101. Because these are quarter classes, computers and health, they alternate. So on Tuesday, he'll have computer programming, then SLU 101. Wednesday would be health and SLU 101. Now his friend might have SLU 101 in the morning and his health and computer programming in the afternoon. The nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about any carpool elements as long as the people that you know are registered for, for the courses. Everybody starts at nine, everybody finishes at 245, and all of your carpools can work out just as, as, they, as they would normally need to. It is possible, it's rare, but some students can only do the morning or the afternoon. So if that's the case, um, you can tell us, you can send me an email directly and uh, and I will make sure that you're in the SLU 101 that's either in the morning or the afternoon. If students are going to take any summer school, we always have them take SLU 101 because that's where all those important transition elements are taught. And then they'll just do health and computer programming during the school year. Um, oh, and I wanted to get to this graphic here. So this is what our school day schedule looks like. So like I said, there are seven slots and that's what these seven letters across the top are. So, you know, this might be biology and this might be Arabic and this might be human geography and theology. So basically what you can see here is those letters just go in order. So on Monday, the first day of school, which actually isn't a Monday this year, but um, you know, that, that first day of the cycle, we go A, B, and then we have activity period, which Jen talked about, which functions both as a break and as an opportunity for co-curricular involvement. Then um, you can see that they kind of split the juniors and seniors will eat lunch while the freshmen go to class, and then we, we switch back. Then you have two classes before the end of the day. Notice that we have five classes meeting on Monday. So then since five classes met, we made it through period E, and then we go to the F class. Then we'll go into our programming period, which we call the advisory. So this is an opportunity for us to teach all sorts of really important formational exercises. 
that help students become the men for others that we want them to be. But maybe these are things that don't fit very well into any particular class. Um, it functions as a homeroom as well. There are two or three adults that will stick with your son all four years and spend two hours a week with all those same students. Together, they'll learn about things like um, our diversity, equity, inclusion, our uh, initiatives, our sustainability initiatives. They'll do a bunch of fun recreational things. That's where we do our class masses and prayer services. All sorts of really great things that help those 20 odd students um, really get together and get to know those two adults. Um, for the first semester of freshman year, the uh, seniors who are paired with or who are in, in small groups with the freshmen will also spend activity period together. Or I'm sorry, uh, the advisory period together. Um, then after advisory, we go into studio. And like Jen said, this is the academic time um, when all of the students will be engaged in some sort of academic activity. Maybe they're making up tests or quizzes. Maybe they're working uh, independently with a teacher. Maybe they're doing a group project with their friends, working on homework or studying. Um, those are all acceptable kinds of things. The other thing that's that's nice about this graphic is to help you understand sort of how a free period might fit into a week. So imagine your son's free period is during D. So in this particular week, and obviously it just sort of, the snake just sort of rotates through um, and the, the head always chases the tail. So basically if period D were the free period, he'd have a free period here on Monday, again on Wednesday, and then Thursday, but notice t a D doesn't happen on Tuesday and Friday, so there wouldn't be a free period there. Likewise, the same sort of thing. If biology is period D, it's the same way. Um, now, all courses, if I had chosen a different letter, if I had chosen A, you'd notice that A meets four times this week. Um, so they're all just sort of rotating through. All of the courses by the end of the, the term will meet the same number of times. Okay, another thing to consider is information about placement tests. So uh, Kate already talked about placement tests in language. We also have placement tests for math. So um, on that document that is uh, shared in the draft, you'll have the placement test registration form. And if your son wants to do that, then you'll just fill out that form. He can take either the language or math, or he can do both, um, whichever is appropriate. It is important to say that when we talk about placement in math, we're talking about placement beyond Algebra 1. So Algebra 1 is our minimum level course. Some of your, your, uh, your sons might not be taking Algebra 1 yet. They might be doing um, math that's a level below that, kind of regular eighth grade math. If that's the case, that's fine. They'll just come into Algebra 1 learning it like everybody else. Most students uh, coming into St. Louis U High have some experience with Algebra 1, but we know that different schools and school districts treat Algebra 1 very, very differently. Um, and we use the placement test to determine whether students should start from the beginning with Algebra 1, should move into what we call accelerated Algebra 1, which is a class that moves faster and gets some more stuff done, or if they've had a rigorous and robust Algebra 1 experience, then they can start directly into freshman geometry. No matter where they start, um, you know, a, a, any student coming in, even without any algebra at all, if he's a motivated student who likes math and wants to work, he can make it to the second semester of college calculus. So Calc 2, um, you know, St. Louis U High has um, various levels and, and pathways that will get students as far as they want to go. Um, so some pretty exciting stuff there. The students who start off in freshman geometry can, if they want to, make it even further. So you can see the times and dates here um, for what we're looking for. At this point, I wanna go back um, and now we're gonna start the actual process of registration. Um, so you probably have already um, gotten into PowerSchool. If you haven't, that's okay. Um, we, can, we can worry about that. The course requests are due by Friday afternoon, so you've got plenty of time. Notice that we don't do course requests on a first serve, first come, first serve basis. Um, the only constraint is if you don't submit your requests by March 8th, then you go into the 
the kind of the back of the line and you'll wind up getting courses that uh that that still have room for them um but as long as you make it by you know 4 p.m on march 8th you will be just fine so everybody if you click on this link right here it will take you to a screen that looks like this dr foy as you're making that transition we've had a couple of other questions that may impact how folks complete their um, course requests okay. first is um, pe offered at slu for freshmen and then secondly, how many credits total are required for graduation? Sure. So we don't have freshmen take PE. Um, the way PE, so they oh, they do take a course in the PE department, which is health. So all freshmen will take health. That is their freshman PE course. Um, they are, uh, all students are required to take four units of, uh, four quarter units of credit. So one whole credit. Uh, accumulated over the course of four years. One of those is health, and then three are PE classes. Now, of those PE classes, up to two can be satisfied by completing a season of St. Louis U High sports. So, you know, if your son plays a season of, you know, football in his freshman year, and then he plays, and then he runs track in his sophomore year, um, that would count for two of his quarters of PE. All students must take at least one quarter of PE, but the other two, like I said, can be satisfied by the successful completion of a season of St. Louis U High Sports. The one caveat there is that they do have to be in two separate years. So a, a two-sport athlete in freshman year can only use one of those sports to satisfy his PE credit. Does that clarify things, Jen? I believe so. The only other thing that might help for folks to um, wrap their heads around is if their son is not rostered on a SLU athletic team, are there still opportunities for PE classes to fulfill those requirements? So uh, during freshman year, the we typically don't have freshmen doing that, but we have um, weights, regular PE, which is sort of like games and physical activity. Um, and yoga during the school year. And then in the summer, there are also offers uh, offerings for strength and conditioning and um, bicycling on the Katy Trail and, and things like that. So at this point, you if you log into PowerSchool, you'll see a screen that looks almost just like this. Um, you might have to click on class registration um, if you start off on a different home screen, but once you click this little pencil and chair that says class registration, you'll come to this screen. Um, basically, the idea here is these courses in grade nine core, everybody takes the same course. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, what if I pass into a higher level of algebra one? Um, I will change any student who is recommended for a higher level on after you've already submitted um, uh, your courses. So you're going to, everyone will submit algebra one and, um, and then we'll change it. If any student, you know, is moved into accelerated algebra one or freshman geometry. Next, we're going to start thinking about our modern or classical. Issues. Um, so basically you'll notice this little red, uh, red exclamation point here. What that means is that this requires you to, to do something. So you click on the pencil and it will bring up your choices. So Arabic, Chinese, French, Latin, Russian, and Spanish. Those are the six choices, and you must choose your first choice. Once you do that, notice that you now have a green check mark, um, and then you wanna click your second choice. So like uh, like Mrs. Toussaint said, we try to give everybody um, their second, or I'm sorry, their, their first choice, but we're not able to do so. Um, so, um, and then you just kind of pick your third. So. You have to express different first, second, and third choices. Um, and then you'll have three checks here and you're ready to move on. If you you know make a mistake at some point and you want to change your mind, just click on that, that pencil again and you can change to a different choice and then submit that. So again, I've got three different choices in ranked order. Once you're done with language, then you click into fine arts. So in fine arts, um, there are, and this is a little bit confusing, and but unfortunately the way this uh, the way this sets up is, it, PowerSchool just kind of does it in a a confusing manner. 
So remember those three choices, um, survey of performing arts, survey of visual arts. So these are the ones that most folks do. And then there are the bands, okay? So you're gonna go into these, uh, It's it, for most of you, it'll be on page two, and then you'll check you know, your first choice, survey of performing arts. You have to then give a second choice. So you'll notice that there are fewer choices um, because we'll get to this for the for the rare students who are going to request multiple um, multiple fine arts choices. So so we had performing arts as the first choice. So maybe our second choice is visual arts. We'll select that. Um, and then our third choice, again, you've got the same thing. We are in a lucky situation that it is, in my experience, we've never had to, to give anyone their third choice, but the computer does require you to, to choose three choices. Now, um, this is the part that gets a little bit strange. Um, if your son wants to take multiple fine arts courses, um, then pay attention. If you're not interested in doing that, you can tune out for just a moment. So if your son is a, you know, a, 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 a performing arts guy, and then he wants to take additional classes, the next class would be acting fundamentals. So he would select these two classes, and then you'll notice both of these tiles show up, survey of performing arts and acting fundamentals. And he has to take those in order. So the performing arts, you know, the, the survey is the prereq course to any other courses. Now, if, uh, so you'll notice that there's not all those extra choices in the second choice, because obviously if you're gonna do, if you are in your second choice, then we're not going to assume that you're gonna take multiple fine arts courses. So in the visual arts, um, if, if you chose visual arts as your first choice, then the next course there in that sequence is either uh, 2D design or drawing one. So you could choose either 2D design or drawing one. You can't choose both because you can't take three semesters of fine arts in freshman year. Again, this is very rare. Um, it very, very seldom happens, um, but that's how you would ask to, to, to have a second fine arts semester. Okay, so that kind of takes us through. Again, we're gonna do all the band stuff at the end. So if your son is a, an instrumental music fan, I'll ask you to hold on to the end. Next, summer school. So the vast majority of students will choose to take health, uh, computer programming, and SLU 101. That's what you're, you're just gonna offer, or I'm sorry, you're gonna request these three classes and everybody who requests them uh, to, to happen in the summer because we believe in that summer program so much. Everybody who requests will be granted those classes. If your son was recommended for math, then uncheck computer programming and check math. Those will be the three courses that you're in there. All right, so I will leave health computer programming and school 101 since that's kind of the most common pathway through the summer. So since you are taking your computer programming class in the summer, you'll leave computer science blank because you don't need to take it during the school year, unless, unless you want to take, you want to request C++. So if you've already taken uh, computer programming in the summer, then, in, then you could request intro to C++, which is the next course in our sequence of uh, computer science courses. Again, it's very rare. Um, and freshmen are sort of at the bottom of the, of the, the, the list to get into those classes because the upperclassmen are put into them first. Dr. Foy, there's a couple of summer questions that have come up. So now we're right at this moment. Um, I can answer a few of them and you can also clarify if I say anything that's not true. I've had a couple of questions about my son was recommended for math. Um, must he take math in the summer? That uh, class recommendation was done with a pretty robust data analysis based on not just grade school grades, but test scores, historical um, comparisons over the years for what would what students need to have a successful start to our math curriculum. Even though it's algebra one, it is a pretty aggressive algebra one by comparison to the curriculum of other schools. And we wanna ensure that the student has the uh, best start. So the reason it's a recommendation and not a requirement is that 
in a sense that we can't require any summer school um, because we want to give you the option if there was a serious conflict. But if you are coming to summer school and you are recommended, we will um, kind of insist on you being in that math class because we want the best start for everyone uh, for you know what what data has told us about how students um, can 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 use that benefit to go into the course and it's taught by all of our uh, by a number of our math teachers who've designed that course to be a specific bridge to our curriculum. So um, that's one question and so that means that they would lose one quarter of the free period for three quarters they would have the free period and they would take that other quarter would be computers. The other, a uh, question I had a reminder about the attendance policy for summer. And if you link that we've, we've made it as easy as we hope to, as possible, but if you go on the main SLU High website, slu.org, and you scroll down to the quick links at the bottom, there's it's listed in both summer school or summer at SLU and frequent um, or information for freshman transition. There's a link to the summer school attendance policy there which um, you may miss one class. Uh, we have school J June 10th through July 12th, and we're off on June 19th for Juneteenth and July 4th and 5th. But other than that, you get one absence with, um, and we would expect you to have some advance notice, but other than that, you must be in attendance. If for some reason there is one extra consideration, maybe there's something you would have to email me, summer school principal, and that's all in the, my, tcrdt at slu.org that's all in that information and we can discuss that and see but under no circumstances would a student be able to miss multiple days for any reason and still get credit for the course because we condense so much of that semester into those 22 days i think um uh, miss thomas is there anything else of the of the broader summer questions i think i tried to get most no of them. i think you've covered those there is still some um, confusion around the fine arts curriculum for our incoming freshman dr foy and how to make those selections so if you could perhaps readdress that please yeah so the the vast majority of students are going to take either survey of performing arts survey of visual arts or band um, and we're going to leave band just as its own thing for, for the time being. But the vast majority of students will take one semester survey of performing arts or survey of visual arts. Notice that they are, it's alphabetical and they're on that second page. All of these other choices are there because of band or students that want to take multiple fine arts courses, which again is very rare. Um, but it but it does happen. So um, the instrumentalists just kind of hang on. If you're um, the next course that you could take in um, in performing arts is acting fundamentals, and then the next course in visual arts is either two D design or drawing one. And those two courses are you know relatively self explanatory. Drawing is primarily you know, pen and pencil and ink um, and the, the very basics of, of drawing after survey of visual arts. Design is part computer and part um, and part by hand, um, but it's focusing on design elements rather than the, the specific fine art elements. You can find the course descriptions uh, for those two on the website. Again, then basically, if you want to take multiple courses, you would just check two of those courses. So acting fundamentals and survey of performing arts, both of those are checked. So they both appear here. Then as long as you're placed into survey of performing arts, your second and third choice don't become necessary. I know a lot of parents are, are kind of thinking, you know, I'm going to sign up for as many things as I can. That's not a bad instinct. Um, but in the end, it's not where most of our students end up because most students and families, the, the priority is to land really well and, you know, transition really well and have a really solid experience um, that allows them to, 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 to really get off right away on the right foot. Um, okay. So, in this scenario, the student does not need to take any additional computer science courses. He's already taken health, so you leave that blank. If you were not doing summer school, so if you are one of those families that has the really cool once in a lifetime family trip or the kid who's traveling all, all over the place, you know, playing on his select sports team, that's okay. 
then you're going to select computer programming here in the computer science slot. You're going to select health there. And then you don't have to worry about SLU 101 because we know that every kid must take it. Any kid who does not successfully complete it over the summer is automatically placed in SLU 101 um, during the fall. So every kid has to take it and we take care of that registration. There's nowhere else to indicate that you want it here. Also, again, this is exceedingly rare, but it's worth saying. Um, we do have zero hour courses. If your son um, you know, knows that he loves to sing, then we have our zero hour before school concert chorus that he can join right away. The presumption would be, of course, he'd be in survey of performing arts, and then this would be you know, additional focus on singing. If he's a high level instrumentalist, we'll talk about these jazz combos uh, as well. And then likewise, uh, for those performing arts guys who are Broadway bound, they might choose to take an after school dance course. They would enroll in after school dance one, or they could audition into after school dance two and three. Again, exceedingly rare, but it is uh, technically possible. Um, we like to make sure that students can do as many cool things as they are able to do. Now, once you've got all that stuff figured out, down in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see a submit button. Since I'm not a student, this is my administrator screen, I don't have that submit button. But once you've got that, you'll press submit, and then you'll get to you'll come to a new screen that shows what your requests are and what your alternates are. I'm sorry I can't show that to you, um, but uh, but I, I I don't have access to exactly what your portal looks like. Um, but I do know that that works. Um, okay, so there we have that. Um, we talked about the placement test, and at this point. I'll take a pause for questions. Um, and then after that, we'll kind of say our goodbyes to anybody who isn't sticking around for band and orchestra questions. Any more questions, Jen or Tim? I have not received any. Just a friendly reminder, folks, that this Friday is March 8th. That's the deadline for submitting your course request through PowerSchool. If you run into any technical um, difficulties, um, feel free to um, email support s-u-p-p-o-r-t at s-l-u-h dot org for power school questions if it's related specifically to your son's course request choices um, please reach out to dr foy's office um, his assistant Kristen ray is amazing and her email address is k ray k-r-e-a at slu.org um, but speak now or forever hold your peace. If anybody has any questions, shoot them in the chat, um, chat box and Tim and I will make sure that Dr. Foy sees them. Yeah, if I could just make a couple final plugs again, the that if you go down to the bottom of that freshman transition at SLU on our website, if you ever get a question, there's a link. And if you link that, there's a list of contacts for, for frequently asked questions and people specifically for emails. There's also right above that summer at SLU. If you click that, most of the incoming freshman camps are already posted. Um, some will say information will come later. As Dr. Foy said, uh, some some activities have something before the start of summer before the start of a summer school day, like uh, cross country will have running. You can drop your son off um, by seven. And but all other freshman camps, um, including cross country, work around the summer schedule. So you can see when those are by looking at those things if you're looking at planning those things in the afternoon as well for incoming freshman camps. All right. So it doesn't look like we've got any more questions. Um, at this point, if you are not interested in learning more about the instrumental music program, then we will thank you very much for spending the evening with us. And, uh, and we'll start with our instrumental music stuff in just about 30 seconds. Thank you for coming, everyone. Okay, um, so at this point, let's begin um, talking about kind of how band uh, really sort of works um, at St. Louis U High. 
So our freshman band and orchestra, there's, there's basically three levels of band classes offered at SLU. And many freshmen are placed in fundamentals of band, which is for students who wish to learn to play an instrument or have limited experience and or skill reading music. Uh, concert band. Oh, there we go. Concert band is for students who have played in band in middle school or taken lessons privately. Symphonic band is for students who are advanced musicians who exhibit excellent playing, uh, excellence playing their music and reading music. So those are the three levels, fundamentals of band, concert band, and symphonic band. And those are for the typical band instruments. So those are, you know, brass and, uh, and woodwinds and you know, percussion and, and that sort of thing. Um, chamber orchestra is a class for students who are proficient at reading music and play the violin, viola, cello, and or double bass. So that's our chamber orchestra. The jazz program offers classes such as jazz band, combos, and lab band for students who can read music and play guitar, electric bass, piano, and or the drum kit. Um, so those are our jazz programs that are uh, offered in addition to students who enroll in um, in either concert or lab or or, or piano. Um, so basically now um, what we'll do is go back to our registration screen and I'll kind of show you on that course request um, if you are change that and we'll change that. Um, so basically what's going to happen is you'll just request the course um, if, if you're if you're a band student. So like I said, that's brass instruments and um, and woodwinds and the, the traditional band. If you're in a band, you probably know the difference between band and orchestra. Then request concert band. If you are a strings instrumentalist, then request chamber orchestra. And again, both of these uh, for either concert band or chamber orchestra, you need to be able to read music. Um, if you can only play by ear or you sort of taught yourself or something, then you'll probably, then you'll end up in fundamentals of band um, because you have to be able to read music to be in either of those groups. If you are new and want to add an instrument, if you're new to, to music altogether, then fundamentals is for you. If you, can play an instrument, but you can't read music, or if you want to start a new instrument that you've never played before, then Fundamentals of Band is for you. The last thing is, if you are an electric guitar player or drum kit or electric bass, then you can select Lab Band. One note about Lab Band, you'll notice that it is a 0.5 credit, but it takes place over the entire year. So you can sort of think of it as lab band shares its half study hall and half um, and half band course. Um, so it's the it meets with the frequency um, of a semester course, but stretched over a whole year. Um, but you do need to take the full complement of summer school courses in order to have room for lab band. The last note is piano. Um, so our piano students typically would take class piano or piano two. For any inexperienced piano student, class piano is our introductory and it's already full with upperclassmen, but there is room in piano two um, for experienced students to audition into. So if your son is an experienced piano player and wants to continue that, um, then register for class piano two. Um, now, everybody who registers for anything will take your information and will forward it to our band director, Mr. Pottinger. And then he will get in touch with you and um, you and he'll talk to you about the audition process. So everybody will send in, you know, either they can be done live, it can be done by video, however, you know, is convenient for you. Um, but basically, if you're interested, you want to read this whole in, this whole document um, and really kind of figure out what you what you want. Um, and then Mr. Pottinger will get the list of everybody who requested any band course, and then he'll get in touch and tell you what the audition process is like. Um, 
And then based on your audition, he'll put you into fundamentals or concert or chamber or symphonic or whatever the case may be. What's really cool about our band program is there are so many choices and, and it is really flexible. Students are really able to grow, to learn a lot about music, to appreciate and love music in all sorts of really great ways. Um, so all that information is communicated very well in this document. And then also, you know, Mr. Pottinger will handle that, um, you know, through uh, kind of a one on one uh, interaction. Did we get any questions from that, Jen or Tim? No, so far, um, I think everybody is understanding what you're communicating. Okay, so I think the the basic thing with regard to um, you know to to the band stuff is make your best guess. You're not held to anything. Um, the one thing that's important is band at St. Louis U High. The almost with a hundred percent frequency is a is a full year. So if you want to commit to the band, which is very much worth committing to, uh, make your plans to, to be there for summer school. So um, if there are more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, if you feel like you are well equipped uh, to, to go on and press that submit button, feel free to do so. If you've got some things to think about, you wanna to talk to your son about what course he wants to be in, that's okay too. Um, you can certainly take another couple of days. Starting on Thursday, um, I will send an email to anybody that we don't have preferences from, or if you make some sort of mistake um, and I need clarification, um, then I'll get back to you uh, when, we, when we pick up that mistake before the schedules all get made. Just as an FYI, summer school schedules um, are available um, kind of in, in May, um, and we'll communicate all of that later on. And then fall schedules come out right around uh, July 15th or 17th, somewhere in that neighborhood. Dr. Foy, um, all band programs are the full academic year, is that correct? With a, a, a handful of exceptions um, for lab band class piano two, um, or some other bizarre situations where kids will skip fundamentals of band one and just go into two. That's that's very rare though. So yes, just about everybody is a year long. Okay, great. I see some, uh, I see a question down there about jazz band and the, the zero hour stuff. Um, so talk to Mr. Pottinger. Um, they can do some of the morning jazz bands along with choir because they don't conflict. So, and I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not, I don't remember which ones are which, but uh, I think they can do jazz two and concert chorus, but they can't do combos and concert chorus or something like that um, because they don't meet every day of the week. Um, some meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the others meet Tuesday, Thursday. Um, but he can certainly talk you through uh, that scenario. It is, um, again, students who do the before school jazz bands are, that is in addition to enrolling in either concert band or symphonic band or fundamentals of band. Um, it doesn't, it, it doesn't happen in replacement of those main bands. All right, folks, um, you have been a wonderful audience. Thank you very much for all the terrific questions. Thanks for giving that time. Um, I'm seeing we're starting to kind of have people fade away anyway. So hopefully that means you have all the information you need to make the, the, the great choices. Um, we thank you very much for coming. We're excited to have you at St. Louis U High and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Um, if you've got questions, feel free to, to send an email to me. K-F-O-Y at S-L-U-H dot org. My assistant, Kristen Ray, K-R-A-A at Sluhi dot org. Or Mrs. Thomas, whom I'm sure you already have. Thanks, everybody.